This right here is an exciting project to me because it is, um, it's a, a great way for us to utilize some of our own resources on the land, but also direct them in an area that uh, is beneficial to us. So when we moved out here, you couldn't see the house from the road. But we couldn't wait to get that cleared out so that you could see the house from the road. But after we moved into the house, we kind of realized that we didn't want to see the road. So how do we handle that? These are uh, red cedar trees and they grow all over the property. So I'm gonna quickly take you back to November when we harvested these and then we'll come back to present day. Are they native to here? Yes. So all of these? Yes. Anything that... How do we tell the difference? Is the bark different? Or the inside? Are Wait, you seeing they're, a lot, they're a lot thinner. You can see through them. I was reading that as a characteristic of the, the white cedars. Ah. Ah. A lot of these berries grow up here. And they grow up real tall like pines. <laughs> And you're doing what? You're just looking for them and you're just putting them in wet things and then you're gonna transplant in buckets and then transplant them directly. See, even after like 15 years, if we had blue spruces planted in between them, they would those, if they got that tall, I think those are white. Where's Teddy going? He's looking for trees. He's going where the ground is soft, so he can just pluck them right up. Huh? Ha! <laughs> yeah. They tend to pop up in like little groves. So yeah, first grove I plugged was down there. And you walk like 20 feet. There's a whole bunch more. You realize that I have no idea if this will actually end up working. That's all right. We've got them, they're back here. We want to create a privacy, natural privacy fence. Oh. No harm, no foul. We can try it. There's a kind of big one right here. Can you pull that one up or do you have to get the shovel for it? I probably need the shovel so I don't damage it. You want to try it? Hey, there's an old fence post. Yes. Too stuck in there. So the the root systems, do they just sprawl out? Yeah, like the ones on the dam, ah. they try digging out, but the roots are like entwined with the rocks. Huh. The small ah. ones, the roots have barely started to grow. But the ones along the dam that are a little bigger, they're in there pretty good. I can't even, like they're smaller than the ones in the bucket, but I can't dig them out. Mm. So Benjamin and I are out here today. Um, it's, it's a pretty chilly day, isn't it, Ben? Mm -hmm. But we have been collecting cedars behind us. You can see one of our ponds where the water's gotten pretty low because of a lack of uh, rain over the summertime. But um, it seems to be a prime spot for cedar seedlings. Um, and what we're doing is we're going around and we're picking up 
as many cedar seedlings as we can possibly get and uh, throwing them in a bucket and then we're going to take them back up to the house and plant them. Yeah! Like this! That is not exactly a cedar seedling. Okay, let me show you another one. One second! Like this! That is a cedar seedling. So ben, what are we doing, buddy? Um, we're hunting. I don't know what's called though. We're getting cedar seedlings. Yay. Hey, come on, get the shovel. Hey, Ben, let me know if you see one. Uh-oh. What? You just passed two right there. See him? I could go get him. No, don't dig those up. Daddy will pull them up. No, 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 no. Let daddy do it, okay? They hurt. Yeah. They feel thorny. How many cedar seedlings do you see in here? I see a lot. Count them. First there's one. So, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them. Right. Stop laying down on a stump. Uh, cedar seedlings that we're getting are, are of all different sizes. Most of them are going to be um, tree tree eastern red cedar, but there is a chance that we pick up Atlantic a few white. Atlantic white cedars, which aren't really what I want, but it doesn't matter for this project. Then stop back for one second. I'm going to decorate it. Yeah. Because it's Christmas. Oh, he's going to decorate it. Yes, because yes. it looks like a Christmas tree. Yes, these all, it's all look like Christmas trees. Yeah, and I love Christmas. This is my favorite time of year. So yeah, as you can see over here, we've got our bucket full of cedar seedlings that we have been collecting. And uh, yeah, I think it's getting dark, so we're about to give up for the day. We planted over 70 of them. I want to say, it was yesterday, we planted uh, 75 cedar seedlings. Uh, we need to plant probably a total of about 600 cedar seedlings by the time this project is all said and done. So it may not get done this year. The perfect time to do this type of project and to collect the, uh, the cedar seedlings and transplant them to where we want them is November going into December after the first frost. Now our first frost actually isn't until tomorrow night, but um, you know, they are going dormant enough that uh, I don't think it's gonna hurt anything to go ahead and start moving them now. Basically during this time of year, the plant is pretty dormant. So that should help uh, preserve the cedar during the transplant period, allow the roots to slowly establish themselves over the winter time, and then in the spring, hopefully spur new growth. Um, I'll show you how we're planting these. I am figuring in at least a 50% fatality rate. 
Um, cedars are hardy trees, so they may all survive. If they do, no big deal. We'll just dig some up and plant a second row right behind it. Yeah, that's about it. And Merry Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a skeleton. Boom. I'm just kidding. Joke. So Ben. Oh, I ben. How many do we have? Eighty. Eighty. So to plant these trees, all we did was uh, uproot them by hand. We just pulled them up with our fingers. Um, and then we kept them in buckets overnight, soaking the roots. I wouldn't do that for more than a night, but uh, by soaking the roots overnight, it, it's just helping to hydrate the plant before they go back into the dry earth. Um, in order to put them into the ground, we just went down the row and dug with a spade shovel. Uh, and it doesn't take a very big hole for such small trees. Wow, there's like a big square thing that's in there that's on the top one, that mini one. So. watered them in for maybe a week or two and then we just kind of let them them be they were planted during uh, November, just after the first frost, the plants were already going dormant. Uh, that's kind of a key to your success in transplanting. Uh, this tree I just transplanted to get uh, today in the spring. I have two that I transplanted today after they were already transplants, so I'm not sure of whether or not these will survive, but I wanted to give them a chance. I put them in a bad spot. I wanted to give them a chance before uh, they just completely die. Next uh, fall, we'll probably dig up some more saplings and, and put them down the remainder of our fence line. I believe uh, with 1,500 feet, um, it's gonna take quite a few of these. The reason why I planted them uh, the distance that I did, which was only about three feet apart, two to three feet, is because I was figuring on a 30% survival rate. I, it's looking more like I'm gonna have somewhere between 
a 60 and 75 percent survival rate in which case i could always go back and i can thin them but um in putting them down because these are free trees i'm getting them off my own property i want to do uh, to put them down close enough that i would be able to come back and make a choice what i may do is if by next fall they are all surviving up on the front row where we put them in i will probably try and transplant every other one and move it back and create two rows. So I'll have uh, a two uh, row hedge of these red cedar trees. We want as much privacy as we can between us and the road. We, we prefer that the highway just disappear. So um, these are a great natural uh, element that we can put into place and let it kind of fill in and, and do its work for us. Red cedars you are very hardy trees. You see them growing on on roadsides all over the place where fences are. Um, they're kind of scraggly looking, but I think they're very pretty trees when you have uh, the right specimens to work with.